Hello Internet and welcome to my very first YouTube video. Today I'm going to be guiding you on how to start up on Aslock and I'll be giving you some personal tips to make you get a head start doing them well. But for this guide to start, we have to answer the core question. Why should you start on Aslock? For me, there is three reasons why. The first being the challenge. Many things that most Pokemon games have become way easier and is criticized for being so. But for Pokemon games having become too easy is not always the case. Pokemon was in fact way more simple before than it is up to this day. With different abilities, types, and of course Pokemon, it has become way more complex than before. But if you don't restrict yourself as a player with more knowledge, you, you could in theory have a level 100 Pokemon in your first gym, of course making the, the game easy. So with restricting yourself with the amount of Pokemon, not over leveling, and have a risk of losing them, a Nuzlocke is the perfect way to make a Pokemon game hard. I would also say Pokemon is very similar to chess or any strategy game where it's like you are, the, the more you play, the better you get as a player. The second reason, emotional impact. The most important rule in a Nuzlocke is, if a Pokemon die, you cannot use it anymore. Making every turn crucial for your Pokemon's survival. This creates the feeling of your Pokemon being in actual danger when you play the game. One vital mistake and you can suddenly lose your favorite Pokemon. You will get a mixed feeling of love and fear, afraid to lose a Pokemon during your journey. Once you actually lose a Pokemon, it's heartbreaking every single time. I, I messed up. I messed up. It. Well, as long as it's not your least favorite Pokemon. Yeah, talking to you, Trubbish. The last and third reason. Something different. Honestly, I've never played anything like it. The closest comparison that I've experienced has to be Fire Emblem on, on Classic Mode. If one of your team members die in three houses, for example, he or she is no longer involved in the story. Exactly if a, if a Pokemon dies in a Nuzlocke. But then again, it's such a different game. And that's it for the reasons to play a Nuzlocke. Now let's get into the rules. The two basic rules of a Nuzlocke is, if your Pokemon dies, you cannot use them anymore. And you can only catch the first encounter each round. You can also have something called the dupes clause, that, that, which leads you have more, more Pokemon, more different Pokemon. Uh, which means if you catch a Weedle and you counter a Weedle, you don't need to catch that Weedle, and you can kind of get catch, get a new, get a new encounter, and you can have a Caterpie instead. Woo! Superb, right? Yay! Big time. I would recommend as well a level, level restriction, a level restriction, so you don't won't over level in some games like. X and Y and Alpha Sapphire, you'll over over level a lot. So I would recommend you to have, if you're if you're known to Pokemon, I would say three levels above the gym leader. If you're not known at all to Pokemon, then I would recommend max five levels because you don't want you want you you want it to be a challenge, right? It's not the not not challenge, but the challenge. Now that we've been through why you should do Nuzlocke and the rules of it, let me give you a few advice so you can quickly become better at Nuzlocke. Tip number one, be fair, don't be afraid to lose. That's part of the challenge. Never tell yourself, this step doesn't count. Rather than that approach, analyze how things went wrong. What could have I done differently? This way you progress and become a better Nuzlocke. Now if I had Luxray, if I had Blaziken, to uh, intimidate, yeah, that, that too, but it didn't matter at that, that point. But uh, if I had Luxray, if I had Blaziken, this would have been a much cleaner fight. Tip number two. There is an enemy in, in, in every single Pokemon game. In every single Pokemon game. And no, it's not Magikarps. No, it's not Wobbuffet. Well, it's sometimes Wobbuffet. But your biggest villain in any Pokemon game, in any Nuzlocke, is critical hits. There is a lot of maths and calculations of how critical hits works. But from my understanding and experience, a critical hit happens around 1 out of 16 times. That will do double the amount of damage than what it would have done normally. 
I've seen many Nuzlocke using potions after getting hit down to half. That is just the death wish waiting to get critted. I would have looked for other options in your party if you were in a similar situation. Crit would have killed. Shit. If. Yeah, this gets. Unlucky. I'm really lucky. Should have switched into dust cops there. Tip number three, when to have a diversity of types in your party and, and, and when not to. When you play a Nuzlocke, having a diversity of different Pokemon typings is important during your survival to be able to adjust to oppo the opponent's strengths. But diversity of, of types in the team isn't as important if you're in a gym that only has one specific type. But diversity of types in the team of course isn't as important if you're in a gym that only has a specific type. Like, if you are going up against a electric type gym, it's great to have ground types. Or even grass types to resist. I would level up and bring Pokemon that suits the gym. You can also bring a bad Pokemon for a big challenge. But I'll touch in on that in a future video. Addisk. Pulse through. We're going to use Water Gun. And this will do ha half, I think. Not in person range. Woo! <laughs> That, that skips the beat, okay? It skips the beat, okay? Tip number four. Plan ahead. Do not be afraid to plan ahead of the challenges that are approaching in distance. Keeping Puchiena, for example, in Pokemon Emerald is very valuable because you'll be coming up against Tain and Lysa, which I consider to be one of Pokemon's hardest gym leaders. One crit, bro. One crit. There we go. Can we get some super easy claps? In chat, can we get some super easy claps in chat? Bros! <laughs> I've never had an easier fight. <laughs> and this makes me come in on tip number five as well, which is sacking. Sometimes you have to kill off a Pokemon and you have to see and you have to find the least valuable Pokemon to sack. Let me bring up an example. You have camera, you have puzzle, and you're you're soon going up against the Elite Four, and you sack puzzle instead of camera. Maybe you need camera for that specific uh, fight though, but if not, um, Puzzle will do much better than in, in the Elite Four than camera would have done. Tip number five, six, I don't know. Um, grind. Hell yeah. Very easily said, grind, take your time, grind up your whole team for the next, um, for the next boss fight. For, grind up your whole team. If you lose a Pokemon, grind up a new Pokemon from the box. Very important to have the most cards to play to play at, to have the most Pokemon or cards to play with during a hard fight. You rather want to spend one hour of grinding rather than eight hours getting back to where you were. Last little advice I want to give, grind safely. But losing a Pokemon during grinding can happen, but it is 100% avoidable. If you do grind, make sure that you won't lose any on that one. I see many grind against high level Pokemon, and what happens? A moment of loss of concentration, or a, or a critical hit can come by. Can I just... switch? Nope. I can't believe that this is my first death team. Combat hits. Does it kill? It does. So now you know why you should play Nuzlocke, how to start a Nuzlocke, and you got some advice from me. If you if you want to join me and my gans and play some Nux Nuzlocke, so you can follow me at twitch.tv slash LeviBeansPop. Champ. <laughs> and uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. Leave a like on the video. If you found this video informative or complete trash, like I didn't get anything out of this way. <laughs> I already knew this. <laughs> Alright boys, I'll catch you guys later.